Two more acts in this section. Dean T. Burge, your first act. Make them feel welcome. Make some noise to Dean T. All right, Liverpool, are we done? All right, let's start you off with some good news then. I have recently kicked my addiction to salted caramel. <laughs> I've moved on to bigger and better things since. Just yesterday, I was in somebody's kitchen, right? Hunched over with a spoon like that. <laughs> scranning a jar of Biscoff spread. <laughs> Gotta make a bit of an effort though to better myself though when you look like the answer to the question, what if Jack Black and Kurt Cobain had a kid? <laughs> Fucking wish I looked like you, Paul. You look great, man. You look like a fucking sexy Bond villain. What's your secret? You know, it's always been like that for me, though, ever since I was young, because I spent the majority of my life in foster care, right? I was brought up in a foster home in Scotland, so my experience was less Tracy Beaker, more a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> And foster parents, they always get this really bad rep in the media, I think. They're either the evil stepmother or the serial killer stepfather. I don't know why I looked at you when I said that, but... <laughs> but you know the worst thing my foster parents did to me, mate? They forced me to play Monopoly every weekend. Can you imagine that? Making a group of vulnerable foster kids compete over housing. and send them to jail if they made a mistake. <laughs> it's all right though, Liverpool, that story does have a happy ending because I got adopted and then my dad decided to bring us out to Dubai. Has anyone here ever been to Dubai before? Yeah. All right, what did you think of it, pal? Fucking loved it. Fucking loved it. What about you? Someone else yelled at it. It wasn't the burp guy, was it? <laughs> I can smell shawarma up here. Maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, Dubai's a really weird city, man. I'm not going to slag it off too much, you know, aesthetically somewhere between Star Trek and Aladdin, but <laughs> politically between Henry VIII and Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> I felt so bad. You know, I felt bad worst of all in Dubai. All those wee private school teachers that now have to teach a group of five-year-olds that can already count to a million because it's their pocket money that week. These little Gordon geckos running around trying to get rid of their daddy's trust funds. Absolute fucking insanity. And But the weirdest thing growing up in Dubai is that I was quite a big fan of rock music out there. And I learned very quickly that that's not the kind of city that you go to for a rock concert. The setup's never got a laugh, but fuck it, I'll take it. Like, uh, like pal, you look like the festival type. Like, if you were to book a, a rock band for a rock festival, who would you go for? You can just name a band, mate. It's fine. You're not on the tail. You're not getting booked by the police here, mate. You're <laughs> Foo Fighters would be fucking class. You know who Dubai booked for their rock festival, mate? James Blunt and the script. Oh, we got some fans then, have we? Great. But, you know, that's not the kind of place, like, you couldn't have, like, a sort of rock nightclub out in Dubai. Anyone wearing that amount of gothy eyeliner in black in the desert would just get accused of coming out of a car lamp. So I decided that when I came back to the UK, I was going to go see all the bands and the artists that I could never see when I was out there, make my way over to the Barrowlands, really great venue up in Glasgow there. And I am not prepared for the four words that come over the tannoy system when I get in there, Liverpool. Open up the pit. <laughs> if anyone's never been mosh pitting before, I'll sum it up like this, right? I've never been sat there at home listening to like the Arctic Monkeys or something going like, you know what will make this song better? is if I was getting my cunt kicked in <laughs> by 50 guys named Patrice wearing matching fedoras. Like, not the kind of place I want to go to. So I get into that sort of mosh pit thing. Everyone starts grinding, grunting on me. This guy with a flame tattoo comes over and starts railing at the back of me. And that is the last time, Liverpool, I ever went to a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> <laughs> But no, nah, things are different now. Uh, I grew up, I came back to the UK. I'm now a queer autistic comedian, or as Twitter likes to say, a brave, inspiring role model. <laughs> you loved that one, didn't you, Paul? <laughs> nah, I think the only thing that I'm inspiring, though, is a gay reunion of My Chemical Romance. 
I don't think I'd make a great role model either, because all my role models have turned out to be really terrible people. Like Gal Gadot, who plays Wonder Woman, right? Does anyone remember this thing she did during COVID where she was singing Imagine with a bunch of other celebrities? Trying to raise people's spirits during a pandemic. I think the only spirit that she raised was John Lennon's. <laughs> who, turning in his grave, has to remind her. But as a former member of the Israeli Army Forces, her doing a song about world peace is a bit like Vladimir Putin telling you how much he likes chicken Kiev. <laughs> I don't think I could call myself brave either. I mean, the only thing that's brave about me is that in Scotland, I live in this town called Renfrew, right? And Renfrew is one of the wildest fucking towns that you will ever go to. It's the only place in Scotland, nay, I think, the world where you can see a screaming heroin addict banging on about how they don't want a vaccine because they don't want to live their life controlled by a substance. <laughs> but enough about my gran, let's get on with this, shall we? <laughs> People will always come up to me with the vaccine stuff as well, with me being autistic. I'll see stuff on the news like, we don't want to vaccinate our kids because we might give them autism. But if that's true, what's going to happen when I take a fucking vaccine? Is <laughs> this going to become my superhero origin story? Then again, I think that'd make quite a great superhero though. Autism boy. Leaps tall buildings in a single bound because he doesn't like being touched by strangers. <laughs> As you can obviously guess, though, Liverpool, I grew up extremely nerdy as well. You know, as a wee kid, I always wanted to be Spider-Man. Not heroic, though. I just fucking hated my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else was a fan of? I also used to be a massive Harry Potter fan as well. You know, not anymore, obviously. Just cannot forgive J.K. Rowling for what she's done. Those Fantastic Beast movies were fucking terrible. <laughs> But you know what, if you're out there, right, and you just like the Harry Potter books and the movies, that's fine. I'm not going to call you a transphobe. I think that would be unfair. At the same time, I've got no time at all for dealing with transphobic Harry Potter fans. There's no point arguing with these people. But there's a beautiful irony in me getting told that my gender's not real by people with proud Hufflepuff on their bios. <laughs> But at least now, I finally know the character that J.K. Rowling must have based herself off as. You know, when I was young, I thought it was Hermione Granger, you know, the compassionate, caring, book-smart hero. Turns out, it's actually Moaning Myrtle. <laughs> a screaming banshee stuck in the past, peeking at genitals in a bathroom. <laughs> But I've always had a lot of challenges growing up gay in Dubai. You know, my biggest challenge actually was I had to grow up with a Catholic dad and a Protestant mom, right? And my dad had this phrase that he used to drill into me when I was very young. Not like that, mate, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> he was not that kind of Catholic, pal, don't worry. But nah, whenever my dad would kind of see me upset, he would kind of boost his way over and go, Oi, cowboy up, son. You can imagine his surprise when the cowboys I took inspiration from was Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> and I tried so many things to try and make myself cool and fit in. When I was 13, I tried skateboarding. Spoiler alert, that didn't make me look cool. In fact, it made me look fucking worse. I looked like that cunt Declan in every Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game who gives you a side mission spray paint in a primary school. Fucking weird and stuff, but skateboarding very quickly changed the way I spoke. Everything I said kind of became like skateboarder lingo. And I remember this exact night when I came in late and my mum was fucking raging. She goes to me, where have you been all night? And it's like, mum, I'm tired. Me and my friends have been out grinding all night. There's even a video on the internet. I can send you a link later. And I got grounded for that, pal. I got fucking grounded for that, and I was gutted. After months of trying, I'd finally managed to nail an ollie. And now I wasn't allowed to see him again. You know what the weird thing about those jokes and my whole set is, Liverpool? Despite that everything that I have told you is, I still get people on Twitter coming up to me saying that I am trying way too hard to appeal to straight people. Me! appealing to straight people. I was fucking raging when I got told that, Paul. You know what I did? I took my can of Stella and I threw it straight at the fucking TV. <laughs> Up until then, my only experience with Stella was when I played her in a streetcar named Desire. <laughs> Liverpool, you've been fucking class. I've been Dean T. Byrne. Good night.
Pretty Bell, everyone!